Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing protein extraction from cells. Okay, so we're currently discussing lysis buffers and how you would make a lysis buffer. Okay, so we're going to do an example of a calculation. So let's say we want to make 100 milliliters of lysis buffer. We've already discussed that one milliliter of that would come from the Triton X100. Now we want to get the correct concentrations of TRIZ, the correct concentration of sodium chloride, and the correct concentration of EDTA. So let me remind you of the correct concentrations for each of these. So TRIZ, which is TRIZ hydroxymethylaminomethane, we want 10 millimolar of TRIZ in our final 100 milliliters of lysis buffer. Okay, next up, sodium chloride. We want 150 millimolar uh, sodium chloride in our final lysis buffer. And finally, EDTA, uh, we want uh, 0.5 uh, millimolar. Uh, concentration of EDTA in our final lysis buffer. Now I told you that each one of these uh, was a solid rather than a liquid. Okay, so we're going to actually have to measure out the mass of this that we want. So we need to work out how much mass do we need um, to put in basically to get this correct concentration. Okay, so we now need the molecular weights of each of these molecules. So I have got these already. So the molecular weight of TRIZ is 121.14. The molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.44. Okay, and the molecular weight of EDTA is 372.24. Okay, so now let's work out how much mass are we going to have to add to our um, lysis buffer to get these concentrations. Okay, so remember we are making 100 milliliters. We're making a tenth of a liter. Now, basically, remember what molecular weight means. Molecular weight means that if you took a mole of tris, and remember a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of the thing. So if you took a mole of tris, it would weigh 1 to 1.14 grams. If you took a mole of sodium chloride, so this many sodium chloride molecules, it would weigh 58.44 grams. If you took a mole of EDTA, it would weigh 372.24 uh, uh, grams. Okay, now how many moles are we going to need to add of each of these? So we'll firstly work out how many moles we need to work uh, add of each of them, and then we'll work out how many grams we need to work out using uh, the fact that we know the relation between moles and grams because we have these molecular weights. Okay, so how many moles do we need to add of TRIZ to get 10 millimolar in 100 milliliters? So what does this mean? What does 10 millimolar actually mean? It means that in a liter, we would want 10 millimoles of TRIZ. So if we had a liter of a fluid, uh, which had a, a solution rather, which had 10 millimolar TRIZ, it would contain 10 millimoles. So if I actually made up a liter of this, um, a liter of solution with 10 millimolar TRIZ concentration, then basically there would be 10 millimoles of TRIZ within that liter, basically. So we don't want to make up a liter. We only want 100 milliliters. So we want a tenth of that. So we're only going to need a tenth of 10 millimoles. So we actually only need one millimole. So we actually only need 10 to the negative three moles of TRIZ within our um, lysis buffer because we're only making up a tenth of a liter. So this isn't too difficult. Okay, let's use the same logic in sodium chloride's case. So sodium chloride, we want a concentration of 150 millimolar, which means that if we made up a liter of this rather than 100 milliliters, we would want that liter to contain 150 millimoles. We're only making up 100 milliliters, however, so we only need it to contain 15 millimoles. Okay, so that's 15 over 1,000 moles. Okay, 
finally, in the case of EDTA, we want um, it to be 0 0.5 millimolar, which means if we were to make up a litre rather than 100 millilitres, it would contain 0 0.5 millimoles. Okay, we're only making up 100 millilitres though, so we want um, a tenth of this basically. So we want 0 0.5 over 10,000 now. Okay, so we've divided it by 10 and then divided it by 1,000. Right, okay, so these are, um, these are the um, numbers of moles that we'd want of each of these. So we can now work out what mass we'd have to add, because remember, this is the number of grams corresponding to one mole. So if we want this number of moles, all we need to do is times this mass by the number of moles we want. So this is very easy. We are going to times 1 to 1.14 by 10 to the power of negative 3. That is the same as 1 divided by 1,000. So effectively, we're just going to take this number and divide it by 1,000. That will take us to... 0 0.1214, 114 rather. So we've just moved everything down three places. So this moved one, two, three places to here. Okay, so we want that many grams of tris. Okay, let's do the same for sodium chloride. So uh, we want to times 58.4 by 15 over a thousand. Okay, it might be easier to think of that as 1.5 over 100. Okay, right. So, let's firstly do the division by 100. So, if we divide this by 100, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 0 0.5844. Because if you divide by 100, you move everything down two places. So, 5 will go to here. Okay, like so. And now, what we want to do is times this by 1.5. Okay, so here's one of them. Now let's take a half of this and add it onto it. So if we take a half of this, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 0 point, and then we'll get 2, 9, and then 2, 2. Okay, so I've just times this by a half. So I've split 58 into a half, that gives 29. Split 4, 4 into a half, that gives us 22. And now what I need to do is just add these two together to get 0 point, and now firstly add these two together because they're easy, 6, 6. Add 9 and 8 together, that gives us 17. So we'll put the 7 there and then we'll carry the 1 forward which will give us 8. So we'll need 0 0.8766 grams of sodium chloride. Okay, right. And now, in the case of EDTA, how many grams do we need? Uh, well, we need to take um, the... This is the number of grams that one mole would be, so we need to times it by the number of moles we want, which is 0 0.5 divided by 10,000 here. Okay, uh, so it will be easier to divide it by 10,000 and then times it by a half. Okay, so let's do that. So if we divide it by 10,000, we need to move these by 4 now. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So it becomes 0 0.037224. And now we need to times this by a half, so we need to divide it by 2. So if we divide 37 by 2, that's going to give us 18.5, and I hope it should be okay. So let's just go for it. 1, 8. So if we double 18, that takes us to 36. So we'll need to bring a 5 over here. If we divide that by 2, we get 1, so that becomes 6. And then 1, 2. I think that is right. I think if we times this by 2, we'll get back to that. So if we times 18 by 2, we'll get 36. If we times 612 by 2, we'll get 1,000, which will take this back up to 37. And then we'll get 224, so that's fine. Okay, so then the uh, mass of EDTA that we'll need to add will be 0 0.018612, which is 
background. Now, of course, this is tiny little masses of these crystals, so we can ignore the volume that these are going to contribute. We can assume they contribute no volume at all. And then what we'd want to do is make up the rest of the volume of the lysis buffer with water. So we'd end up adding nearly 99 milliliters of water, basically. Okay, now, when you actually follow this recipe, you will find a problem, basically. You will find that it is far, far uh, too alkaline, basically. So what you will then have to do is add a bit of hydrochloric acid. So when making it up, what you would be wise to do is not add all the water initially. Add maybe 90 milliliters of the water and leave 10 milliliters because what you'll have to do is add little bits of hydrochloric acid, basically. and that might not be a trivial volume, basically. Uh, so you'll add hydrochloric acid to move the pH down towards more acidic levels until it gets to 7.5, because usually it'll end up far too high, basically, because you've put so much tris in. Okay, so uh, what you will then do is, after you've finished putting in the hydrochloric acid, you'll then add a bit more water to take it up to 100 milliliters. That shouldn't affect the pH too much, so... Uh, you'll then have the correct volume, the correct pH, everything will be fine. If, on the other hand, you added all the volume at the beginning, you'd then find that you're adding in lots of hydrochloric acid and you take the volume over what it should be, basically. So that's why I say uh, be careful there. Okay, so uh, that's uh, our lysis buffer. Now what we will do is we will expose our cell pellet to this lysis buffer. We will then homogenize the cells, so we'll break them up. But I've forgotten one key component. These are fantastic at keeping the proteins uh, happy, um, keeping them safe, but they're not safe from what? They're not safe from the lysozymes that will be released if we just homogenize the cells without thinking. So what you also add in to your lysis buffer uh, just before you're actually about to add it to your lys cells, because generally you'll make up a lysis buffer uh, potentially years before you actually do the experiment and you'll just keep it in the freezer. However, you won't add the protease inhibitors until you're actually about to do the experiment because they shouldn't be kept for years and years. Okay, so just before you do the experiment, you'll then take your lysis buffer, you'll add protease inhibitors, okay, uh, which will inhibit the lysosomes, um, well, the lysozymes within the lysosomes. Okay, and you'll also do the homogenization at 4 degrees Celsius. So you'll do it in a cold room, basically. And the reason for this is that at lower temperatures, uh, the kinetics, uh, the reaction kinetics slows down. So the speed at which the enzymes can actually break down proteins will be hugely reduced. So the amount of proteins that are going to get got by these horrible lysozymes is going to be hugely reduced. So you're basically attacking... Uh, this um, lysozyme or destruction of your proteins in two directions. One, you put in the protease inhibitors to try and inhibit as many of the enzymes as possible, uh, but also you're keeping it very slow so that the actual uh, number of proteins that will be degraded by these enzymes before the protease inhibitors can get to them is mi as minimal as possible. Okay, so once you've added the protease inhibitors, once you've got to 4 degrees Celsius, you'll then homogenize your cells, and then what you'll have, basically, is a test tube full of homogenized gunk, basically. Okay, so all of the cells have been homogenized. Now, this is just some gunk, and I like to do it in turquoise. Now, what you will then do is you will centrifuge this again, so you'll spin it round and round and round and round, and what you will find is that another pellet forms. And this will contain all of the cell membranes, all of the really heavy things which don't really want to be in solution. And they'll all fall to the bottom here in this pellet. And then above, in the supernatant, what you will have then is the proteins, okay? And they will not pellet out, basically. So in this supernatant, you will now have a fluid containing your extracted proteins. So you can take these out and do what you want with them now. Okay, so here are your extracted proteins. And this sort of a supernatant is often called a cell lysate, okay? And you can take these cell lysates and you can freeze them for huge amounts of time, basically, and then use them later. Okay, so this is a cell lysate. 
and you would then obviously take this mixture of proteins and do whatever analysis you wanted to on them, which is generally Western blotting. Okay, so uh, that concludes our video on uh, protein extraction.